Well, good morning. Uh, thank you, Brian, for the introduction. Uh, thank you to everyone. Um, it's really nice to be to have this opportunity to do this presentation. Um, as Brian mentioned, my name is Jessica Mostosela. I am an environmental scientist, and I recently graduated from the Master in Sustainable Development Practice from the University of Florida. Um, for today's topic, I will talk about the Florian Aquifer and its springs and what's hidden matters. So about my research, I did an assessment of agricultural production and water resources to support water resources management and conservation in the Florida Springs region. So I basically uh, analyze information about groundwater extraction for, crop, for the irrigation of crop production. I, and I also uh, try to understand the amount of uh, nitrogen that was being utilized uh, as a fertilizer uh, to support crop production. Um, and all of this happened along the Florida Springs region, uh, which is the area, if you see in the map, uh, where the blue dots appear. And this is an area that covers around 42,000 square miles uh, or uh, 56 counties along the state. Some of, some of the tools I used uh, for this uh, study include ArcGIS, uh, data analysis of secondary data, and also a literature review. And when thinking about the objectives of the scientists in every Florida school program, uh, for this research, I also um, analyzed some social and economic components. And all the information uh, I was able to develop uh, was uh, going to be utilized to identify areas that require attention to inform policy policymakers about some of the management decisions that they, they would need in the future to protect these ecosystems. So for today, we are going to play uh, Florida Springs really short trivia. And uh, as some of the rules, uh, well, each slide will contain a brief explanation about the Florida Springs. Then it will be followed by a multiple option question. Uh, you will have uh, 20 seconds to answer each question in Zoom. So Brian and Stephanie are going to help me uh, uh, with, the, with the questions, with the polls. And then I will provide the response and a brief explanation. By the end of the presentation, you will be able to see additional information about each question in this link. And uh, well, you can see the link now, but uh, don't worry because I am go also going to show it uh, by the end of the presentation. So I don't know if you have uh, any questions right now regarding some of the rules, um, just uh, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will continue with, uh, with the presentation. All right, it seems that everyone has it uh, very clear. So I will continue. Um, I think that uh, to begin, it is very important to define some concepts in order to help everyone get the most advantage of this presentation. And um, I will begin with uh, the, the definitions of groundwater and aquifers. So when precipitation occurs, water starts to infiltrate the soil. Uh, it, fir it first starts filling the empty spaces uh, below the land surface and um, it uh, first uh, reaches the unsaturated zone, which is the area in which plant roots grow. And as water continues moving, uh, water molecules remain suspended and then it reaches the saturated zone uh, in which the aquifer is located. And this is uh, also uh, located under the water table. So for our first question, I would like to ask you is what is a major aquifer in Florida? And we have uh, four options, the intermediate aquifer system, the Floridian aquifer system, the surficial aquifer system, and the southeastern aquifer system. And I will start with a countdown. All right, so time's up. Um, I see that some people are still answering. Um, right. Oops. 
So the answer was the Florian aquifer system. And this system covers approximately uh, 100,000 square miles in Florida, and it extends to Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and South Carolina. And as we can see in the map, um, the, the shaded area in blue is uh, the extent of the Florida aquifer system. Um, so to continue, I will uh, explain more about uh, different types of, uh, of aquifers and also about the springs and the springs magnitudes. So we have uh, unconfined aquifers, um, which are the ones that are closest to the surface. And also these are more permeable um, and also they are more prone to pollution. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I took out the question. Um, so I was explaining about the unconfined aquifers. And also we have uh, the confined aquifers, which are those that are under rock layers, which are tilted, and these are more impermeable. Uh, so when groundwater uh, finds an opening, sometimes uh, uh, they can, the, the water movement can be enough to push the water without any kind of aid. And as a result, uh, water is under artesian pressure. Uh, so when we are talking about the springs, uh, when groundwater finds these openings, uh, water can flow either onto the land surface or into a body of surface water. And the springs uh, can be measured depending on their average discharge of water, which can be measured as in cubic feet per second. And the first magnitude of springs are those that release more than 100 cubic feet per second. The second magnitude springs are those that release between 10 to 100 cubic feet per second. And the third magnitude springs are those that release between one to 10 uh, cubic feet per second. There are up to eight magnitude springs which release less water than that. So for our second question, uh, I would like to ask you is how many springs can uh, you find in Florida? So the options are A, there are over 1,000 first uh, spring magnitudes. Uh, B, there are at least 33 first magnitude springs. C, there are over 500 springs. D, there are over 1,000 springs in the Panhandle. And we will start with the countdown. All right, so time's up. Uh, we are going to see uh, the response now. So the answer is there are at least 33 first magnitude springs in Florida. So the Florida aquifer system provides water to more than 1,000 artesian springs in the, in the state. And this forms the largest concentration of fresh water and first magnitude springs in the world. There are at least 33, 33 first magnitude, 191 second magnitude, and 151 third uh, magnitude springs uh, here in Florida. Uh, oops. Okay, to continue. So the Florida aquifer and both the springs uh, provide different types of ecosystem services, which are very important. And these are ecological characteristics, functions, or processes that contribute to human well being in a direct or, in, or an indirect way. So in relation to the provisioning uh, services, um, along the Florida Springs region, around 87% of the water that was used for crop production came from, one, from groundwater in 2017. When we talk about the cultural services, we are very familiar uh, about the fact that uh, along the springs, activities such as swimming and snorkeling, uh, kayaking, canoeing are very common uh, in these areas. And also it has an, an important historical value since it is possible to find different types of uh, artifacts that belong to early inhabitants. Uh, in relation to supporting and habitat services, the springs also provide uh, important uh, habitats to species such as the Florian manatee, which is a tropical endemic species that 
migrates uh, into the springs during the winter because of its warmer temperatures in relation to the temperatures of the water ocean, or, uh, of the water in the ocean. And finally, in terms of the regulation services, um, the aquifer is able to store uh, groundwater uh, with good quality for large amounts uh, of time. And when we do an analysis of water quality in the springs, it also provides indication about the health of the groundwater resources. So for our last question, uh, which are some issues that affect the health of the spring ecosystems in Florida? And in this case, you will be able to select all that apply. And the possible answers are increase of native springs, aquatic vegetation, leaking septic systems, lower concentration of nutrients that lead to eutrophication, and tourism activity over carrying capacity. So let's start with the countdown. Right, so time's up. Um, let's check the answer. So the answer was leaking septic system, uh, leak, uh, I'm sorry, leaking septic tanks and tourism activity over carrying capacity. So the Florida Springs region faces two critical issues, the declining spring flows and also excessive nutrient loads. And these are, these are a result of uh, different types of activities. So once again, I copied here the, the link. Um, if you visit this, you will find more information. And also, uh, once uh, the study I did becomes available in the UF library, I will be able to share it with you. And with that, I would like to thank um, the Master of Sustainable Development Practice and the Tropical Conservation and Development Program and the Florida Springs Institute who supported these, uh, this research and also to the Thomson Nerd Systems Institute and the Florida Museum for giving me the opportunity to do this uh, presentation today. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>